We're in Barcelona of MWC25. I'm here with Maxime Flamand. He's the CTO of the 5G Automotive Association, or 5GAA. Maxime, thanks so much for joining us in your busy schedule. Uh, can you tell us about the 5GAA's new strategic partnership with the GSMA? What does it bring to you and to the auto mobility sector? Thank you very much. Yeah, um, we are proud to announce indeed that we have uh, signed a memorandum of understanding with GSMA. And um, actually, 5GA as an, an association is representing about 15, 20 different mobile network operators, the, the biggest ones. But uh, by signing an MOU with GSMA, what we want to do is to make sure that we reach out to the 300 plus different mobile network operators and so that they understand what are the concerns of the automotive? Now, the partnership appears to be a result of the GSMA Open Gateway Initiative. That's the GSMA's push to push network APIs for vertical markets via GSM Fusion. What is the role of APIs here? Why are they so important to the 5G AA? Yeah, so partly, uh, indeed, uh, the Open Gateway is one of the vector in which we really want to make a difference in uh, the GSMA. Uh, we want to... Um, bring the um, automotive APIs or, or the requirements in terms of automotive AQ APIs uh, to the attention of GSMA so that they can work, in, uh, work on it uh, in an in, uh, open source fashion. So there is uh, also a, an open source uh, dimension so that eventually all the different mobile network operators can uh, look at these and implement these in their mobile network. Now, Eventually, uh, what it will conclude into, we will have uh, one of the API that we're really interested in the, is the quality of service uh, guarantees, is quality on, uh, quality on demand. And so the mo vehicle manufacturers really would like to have this API available all around the world so they can capitalize on it. Okay, to get that scale, to get, really get that scale of the industry. Okay, excellent. Uh, now, broadening out here to the broader industry, what do you think is preventing wider and faster uptake of Cellular Vita X Direct? Uh, the safety and driving features are compelling. Why are we seeing greater use? Yeah, so the direct component of the 3GPP standards for automotive is, uh, is really putting together uh, the vehicles to vehicles, so having uh, this direct component of, of, of communication. There is a chicken and egg problem in terms of how to implement this and who are the who are the the first implementers? And uh, in this case, the push is not done by the mobile network operators, but the push has to be done by the vehicle manufacturers. And so we are expecting in different parts of the world this uh, implementation being uh, done. Uh, it takes its time, but uh, it, uh, the adoption has to come from the vehicle manufacturer. Do you think there's any concern about the automotive sector using 4G uh, V2X direct, giving the 5G is here now and 6G will inevitably appear in five years time. Does the sector, sector worry about the relative uh, short life scales of these telecom generations? A very good question. This has always happened in uh, every uh, different industries that we each have different life cycles, development life cycles. So yeah, um, now uh, when it comes to uh, the early adoption of 4G by the vacuum manufacturers and especially the direct component, uh, these uh, uh, for LTE V2X Direct was mainly uh, dedicated to um, information to the driver, um, warnings to the driver, um, eventually what we call uh, all the aspects of basic safety. Now, uh, when we are talking about uh, the extension to the 5G V2X Direct, uh, which is uh, at the moment more uh, the radio uh, looked at in Europe, uh, we are talking about more advanced kind of interactions between the vehicles with maneuver coordinations, with uh, sensor sharing, etc. Uh, so this is a next step and um, we have to see not as a concern but uh, as a normal evolution of the radio technologies. Now the 5G AA is a stakeholder in the 3GPP standards process and one of the many organizations that submitted input for the 6G workshop that's coming up in South Korea. What are the general 6G requirements from the automotive perspective? Again, good questions. I know a lot of people are talking about 6G, obviously, because this is a trend. But uh, what we want to really make sure is that 5G hits, in, hits the road in every car as, as soon as possible. So 
uh, what we are asking about 6G in the workshop that is coming next week is just to make sure that we are not talking about a revolution in terms of radio access, but in uh, uh, an evolution of the uh, uh, the good work that we have done in 5G and making sure that this is uh, done without any breaking the um, the radios that are already in place on the road. Okay, well, I'm pretty sure that's the same sentiment we're hearing from a lot of companies here on the show floor at MWC. So, Maxime, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you for having me.